Chris Walling is playing a large role in volume research. I don't really care if it shows meaningful differences as long as it was productive and it did lead to meaningful hypertrophy. I'm probably going to end up at the same spot anyway. I don't know if I caused this. Um, this whole swallowing stuff is, 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 I don't know if it comes from my paper. I don't know if it's caused by my paper. Um, I was thinking about that over the past couple of days because I've, I've noticed a lot of discussion on swelling and volume research. And we put that as a hypothesis in our paper. And um, I, I think I told you guys last time we were um, together and we were speaking, I, I don't necessarily think that volume is playing a large role in the volume research or swelling is playing a large role in the volume research. I think it could be. Um, and, and for me, just based on my experience, I thought it was just as reasonable as a possibility as 0.7 centimeters of growth. And, and again, that's just coming from the perspective of I've taken that measurement and it's three to four times what I've gotten in the change score. So for, for me, right, that is a reasonable hypothesis. Is it a likely hypothesis? M maybe not, but it, to me, it's as reasonable as the idea that you could get that magnitude of growth. And, um, I know I've done different examples to give people an example of how my brain works. Um, the baloney, I don't know if it was effective or not last time I was on a podcast with you, Josh. Um, but I was thinking about other ways to, to express like how my mind thinks about it. When I see 0.7 centimeters of growth, if you could repeat that three times, I think three times is an example I've used previously, that's 2.1 centimeters of growth. Y'all have measured biceps. Some female biceps are around 2.5 centimeters, right? So if you can experience that much growth in eight weeks, how many times a year could you replicate that? I, I don't think you could replicate it twice. If you extended the study eight weeks, let's say you extended the study to 24 weeks. I don't, th you're not capturing that again and again and again and again. You captured it once. I think it might be the most helpful for the, the sake of discussion to maybe just think of high volume outcomes in general and the fact that, okay, in the studies that have explored higher volumes, let's just say for sake of discussion, that's like above 20 sets a week. In general, those seem to outperform the lower volume conditions in those same studies. Of course, there are exceptions, but that was kind of the, the point of our meta regressions is to try to see where the, the balances lie, if you will. So if we just think of high volume research in general, and okay, on average, slightly greater effects, or might be even worse saying meaningfully greater effects. I think it's a, a fair point to consider some of the implications of that, because even if we were to use a smaller absolute change value, so instead of 0.7, if we were to use 0.2, I think you could make the same comment about really any notable or detectable change in hypertrophy over a 10-week study about how often can this actually be repeated. So if it is a value of 0.7, you might say, man, repeating that twice is crazy, let alone over the course of the next year. So repeating that, you know, five times. I think you could even say that about a change of 0.2, right? You would, you would just have to repeat it more and more times. But obviously there's kind of this asymptotic relationship between your training career and additional increases in muscle size. So one way to view this, and I think we, uh, you were alluding to that Revive Stronger roundtable that we did, which I, I think was quite fruitful. One way to view this is to say, okay, obviously this isn't just infinitely repeatable. So one, yeah, one, one perspective would be if we can get pretty big changes, no matter what the group is in a short-term study, that can give us some indication of how to train over the long term and reach a higher peak. Another perspective would be, and this could apply for volume, this could apply for range of motion, this could apply for proximity to failure. Another perspective would be, okay, a 10 or 12 week study, I don't really care if it shows meaningful differences as long as it was productive and it did lead to meaningful hypertrophy, I'm probably gonna end up at the same spot anyway. And I think that's a very valid question. Yeah, sure. I um, First, I think your, your point is, is great and I agree with it you know th this idea that if any research study was repeatable you know I think we'd all be a lot bigger it, so it's it's fascinating to me it's curious to me that you get you get a group of trained people and over eight weeks they pretty consistently I mean if you look at the average um, and I did this um, the average change in muscle size for trained people biceps is 0.23 that's 31 exercise conditions that's an unweighed average change would that be like six um, percent maybe they probably started around four four centimeters 4.2 um i, I don't have I don't, that i don't do public math so i'll leave that one to you but <laughs> we can let the um, listener do it 
but but anyway, you know, it's it's interesting that in a fixed period of time you can capture that. Um, but the repeatability of that doesn't seem to 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 be necessarily be the case. And um, I gave a talk at UCF a few months ago where we discussed these things, and I was I was really interested to get. There's a lot of great researchers at UCF that um, you know study muscle growth, study body composition, and um, I was interested to get their feedback as well of of like you know are we just capturing this this moment in time where we have hyper focused training and you know things are made a little bit more ideal. And we're, we're capturing growth and that growth is just, you know, a blip that we can, we can achieve it. We're going to eventually lose it when we lose focus and then we can regain it if we focus again. Um, and, you know, maybe this is a, a horrible view of research, but it, it, I, the more and more I think about it, I, I lean towards it that, you know, it, it, it's not something you can extrapolate linearly. I, and I think everyone would agree with that. Yeah. Um, just, I, I do think it can inform practices, um, but I think as a scientific community, like sometimes we roll with something and, and we'll reach a conclusion that may not be appropriate. You know, if higher volume was better in this eight week period, is it is it equalized over a year anyway? You know, because if you had more uh, a greater rate of growth over eight weeks, what's the like? Is that group just going to slow and then the other group's just going to catch up to it kind of slow and steady? Um, you know, sometimes research isn't interpreted in the context of a, a larger picture. And if I can give an example of, of just how I'm thinking right now, um, a lot of these training, detraining, retraining studies have become popular. A lot of people talk about them. And sometimes the, the interpretation is, well, you can take X amount of time off and you're fine. Um, you'll gain it back in eight weeks. It's like, well, the actual interpretation of that study is, no, that, that little bit you gained in this eight weeks, you can gain back in this eight weeks. But if you're a high level bodybuilder and you take time off and you lo- like, it's it's different to recapture this small thing that happened here and have it repeat um, than it is to detrain and, and have a, a much different ceiling because a lot of these studies are taking untrained people, train them, detrain, retrain. It's like what you're losing and reacquiring is a, a very small amount of tissue. And you know, th- sometimes the the conclusion we reach and the thing we tell people may not match the reality um, because the reality of any conclusion we can give people with certainty, is this eight weeks, 12 weeks, 16 week in rare circumstances concept. 